Harbor Freight Pressure Pot Revisited. I'm gonna answer all your questions. Here we go. Hi, I'm Jake. I made this video on how to set up this Harbor Freight Pressure Pot almost two years ago. And I've got tons and tons of questions over things and um, some things I just weren't clear about or I didn't think it was that important. But now, after hundreds of comments or whatever, I'm going to go over each one. First things first, this is a cheap pot. There's better pots, but I'm here to get the beginning resin caster into res Like I'm here to take the intimidation out of resin casting. So this is an entry level uh, pot that's gonna get you into it. I've gotten a uh, different pot since then. Um, there's a video on that, I'll put that up there. But this is for the beginner. And if you don't need anything larger than this, this will get you through. I mean, this is all you need. One of the first thing is, what if it leaks? So what do you do? And what I did was, I just examined it, because this is gonna leak, it still leaks. It's cheap and it's probably gonna leak. So one of the things I did was, if you feel the top of this lid, it's got some powder coating or whatever that black is right there. Whatever that black stuff is right there, and it, it kind of has a ripple to it, so I've just sanded it down flat. I got a piece of sandpaper on a board and just, uh, it was a longer board than this pot, so I went back and forth, and so it was flat. And that's about it. And you can see a couple spaces on here where, where it's shiny, and it, it seemed to help out a little bit, but it just flattened it out. And then under here, you just kind of make sure it's clean and I've heard of putting petroleum jelly or, or stuff like that on it and I don't know if that helps. It might ruin the, the rubber, but so my solution is, and I'll show you here, get these. You want to put this in the same spot every time. So let me see, I have a line drawn there and a line drawn there. So then you'll tighten these up. These knobs are probably the worst part about this whole setup. I just keep a big crescent wrench around and it'll fit right over these knobs and you just kind of tighten it up. And it tightens up easy. A lot of people make knobs for this and I probably should but I just haven't and tighten them up so we'll just leave that we'll leave that there for now I'm gonna back this regular off so I can show you how the regular works at the same time so I'm gonna go ahead and put some air on it and it probably will leak and now that I'm doing this it probably won't leak safety glasses and Add the air. So I'll go ahead and show you the regulator right now. You're gonna turn this to the right to make more air go in it. And here, there it's gonna go start leaking. So now what I do, this is, you can hear it leaking, <laughs> and it does it all the time. I have these clamps, and I have them sitting right here by the table, and I have it at the corner of the table on purpose, so that I can I clamp it right to the table. And of course, when you do one, you need to do the other. So I clamp that down and then I'll go ahead and get my wrench <laughs> and tighten it down some more. <laughs> of course. Usually not this finicky, but of course, since I'm videoing, it'll 
it'll do it. Plus, I'm kind of putting, trying to put too much air in there anyway. That's 50 pounds right there, and it's and it's not leaking. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and keep my glasses on for you. Um, I just keep the clamps right there. It's good enough, and then it, even if there's a small leak, that's why I left the regulator on here so that you could leave the air on it, and when it if it does leak out a little bit of air, the regulator will catch it, let more air in, and you're covered the whole time. So, is it inconvenient that it leaks? You spend $100 on a pot and it leaks, yes. But there's ways to get around it. A couple clamps. Uh, you can make a knob to get these tighter. I bet if you get those tighter from the start, if you can make a knob for it, there's lots of people out there who made knobs to go over these, these, wing, uh, these wing bolts. And so you can tighten it better. But this is what I do. That's my way to get around it. Um, Usually when you do something the first time and it works, you just don't veer from that. So this is what I do. So I'm going to show you the pop-off valve, how to adjust the pop-off valve. This has been a, a, a lot of people have asked that. Here's the pop-off valve back here. Um, it's super easy. There's little slots on each side of this, this pop-off valve. Watch, I'll show you how it works. And I use this to let the air out. It lets it out really fast, so watch. Now you can hear the regulator letting air back in. And you can see it right here. So that's the importance of the regulator. But pop off valve, you're gonna stick your little screwdriver in here and go to the left, counterclockwise, we're gonna loosen it. That loosens a little spring in there and then this is gonna come out easier. So we're just gonna turn it. Until it pops. Okay, that's 50 pounds right there. So I'm going to tighten it up just a little bit so it doesn't pop too quickly. It's just a safety precaution. You get a little bit too high, you want it to pop off. You can hear our air going back in there. So hopefully, you can see up there in the top view how to adjust that. Two little slots over here, stick your little screwdriver in there and turn it. You turn it, you tighten it to, to let it let more pressure in before it pops and you turn it, you loosen it to go at a different level. When you first get this pot, it's going to be set really low so that's, I think that's why I get all the questions is I get it and they freak out because it's, it's popping off and not letting enough air in so uh, hopefully you understand that and I got a lot of questions on that and I'm happy to answer them now. So once again, some people don't use the regulator. I use it because this does leak and um, why not? And the things that I use like Illumilite Clear Slow, you can demold this stuff in a couple hours. So you're only, if you have stuff you're gonna go overnight, I can see where that'd be a problem having your air on all night or your compressor running. But it doesn't, this hasn't, uh, kick the compressor on this whole time and I've already let it out a couple times. So anyway, um, I keep the regulator on there for that reason and then whenever I go to let the air out of it, I just undo the air supply. I let my pop-off valve. Get my clamps off of here. <laughs> And I just have them on the table. I have them right here all the time. And then go ahead and loosen these up. And then you're there. And then you, you see what I pulled out earlier. Super cool, uh, super cool stuff. So what is this doing? I don't know if you can see. This is out of the, these are the ones out of the original video, I think. I'll get a close up with my phone, it does better. The top one was done with a pressure pot and the, uh, the bottom one, I don't know if you can see the bubbles in there. They're real tiny bubbles and you're not going to get rid of them. Um, and that goes to the next question. 
I'm not sure how well you can see that, but this one has no bubbles in it and this one has bubbles. And what I did was I just, if you watched the first video, I was trying to show you why you need a pressure pot. The question is, what does the pressure pot do? Well, those bubbles that are in that one blank, as soon as this gets up some pressure, it squeezes those bubbles so tiny you can't see them. And you come out with crystal clear casts. Um, so now, by far, by far, by far, the most commonly asked question is, why not degas with a vacuum chamber? Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. It takes a long time. The Illumilite Clear Slow I use, you only have 12 minutes. So for me to mix it up, add the colors, do what I gotta do, put it in the vacuum chamber, get the bubbles out of it, and then pour it, it would already be set up before it would you accomplish what you need to accomplish. So if you have some resins or epoxies that take 45 minutes, you might have time to do that. But the, like the real answer is I have pressure pots. They're immediate. It, as soon as the air goes on, it, it squishes those bubbles and then um, it's crystal clear. So that's the deal of it is some people want to degas with Vacuum, that's fine. It takes a long time and I've had people try it and they just, if you've had a pressure pot, you, you won't go back to degassing. It, I guess is the point. So it'll work. Um, and we'll, maybe one day I'll do a video on what the difference side by side or whatever. But um, if you have a pressure pot, you don't have to worry about degassing with the vacuum chamber, I guess is what the, the moral of the story is. And the resin that I use most of the time doesn't have a long enough working time to need degassed or to be degassed in a vacuum chamber. So hopefully that answers that question. I've been asked that a million times. The bottom of this is concave and I've had people ask, uh, do you, why don't you just fill it with resin? Well, if you spilled resin on the resin, it would become together, uh, would be one thing. A lot of people put, they cut a circle out of HDPE plastic, put it in there. Um, it's pretty easy or you just, you can kind of, you really need to level, whatever you put in there, you need to have a level, whether you level the pot or level that in the pot, um, because you, I come out with blanks that are crooked and I learned that the hard way. So sometimes Harbor Freight's gonna make different iterations of this or different thread sizes of this or that or whatever. Um, I don't know anything about all that. You just have to, if you buy one and it's different than what I said, You'll just have to figure out what the thread sizes are, whether you've got to go uh, thread gauges. They make little tools like this. This one happens to be metric, but they make things like this where you can figure out threads on. So I'll put a link to some of these below and you can figure out what the threads are in the, in the pot that you get. Now I ended up getting a bigger pot because I had to do a, a project that needed more space than this has. Matter of fact, it was something like this, but it was a hand coming out of AstroTurf holding a football. I'll put a link to that video right there. Uh, check it out if you want to. This one here, you, you'll get spoiled. And I really think um, if you're going to do this a lot, you probably need that. But to take the intimidation and cost out of resin casting for, for people that want to do it, this is perfect. Now, if the cost isn't a, a thing for you, then th there's pots that are this size that have the same kind of uh, wing nut knobs and everything, all the stuff that makes that nice, they have in pots this size. I'll put a link to some of those below, but um, I, really, I really believe in this and I really believe that um, people that want to get into resin casting can get into resin casting uh, cheaply if they want to. If this is your first time here, go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell and all that. I do resin casting. I do tool tutorials like this one, uh, some uh, projects. Uh, I do instructional and music videos, all that kind of stuff. Uh, if you're interested in that, hit the bell, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff. And if you did make it to the end of the video, go ahead and in the comments and tell me, tell me hi, tell me your name, and tell me what you like to resin cast. So y'all be safe. We'll see y'all next time, and y'all be good.